State machines are ways of modeling behavior. State machines require a start state. The start state is usually indicated or is pointed to by an arrow. As you can see on this one, S1 is the start state. It contains a final state. It turns out in, the, in this machine, the start state and the end state are the same. The final or accepting state has two rings around it in this diagram. It has a transition state function, which is a complicated way of saying that you have to know what happens when you get some input. And that input, or the transition, has to be deterministic. In other words, you will know exactly what happens when you get a certain amount of input. But let's look at this machine here. It starts off in S1, which is the accepting state. So if you get no input, whatever you put in, nothing, nothing is actually accepted. If you get a 1, it stays as in the accepting state. But when you get a, z when a 0 is entered, imagine that values are being fed into this machine. If you ha start off in state 1, and you stay there as long as you get ones, as soon as you get a zero, you transition to state two. And you stay in state two as long as ones are seen as input, but as soon as another zero shows up, you're back to state one. Now what this means is that you will, this machine will detect if the input has even numbers of zeros. Because if you have even numbers of zeros, when all the input has been read in, then you're in the accepting state. You can work through this yourself. Let's look at another one, slightly more complicated. This might be used to evaluate some sort of code. The start state, you can see, has a blue line around it. But the end state is over here at state 5. If you look at this, you'll see that to get into the machine, you need to start off with the letter A. Oh, by the way, when you have state machines, it you have to specify the language or what symbols or actions are allowed. And here you go. You're allowed to have A, B, and C. So if you have an A coming in that takes you to state 2 right here, you got an A, takes you to state 2, you get a C, and you end up in state 5, the accepting state. If that's your entire input, you're finished. Success. Good. But if you look at this, B is also allowed. And I'll let you look at this yourself sometime later, but I'll just tell you that this machine will not accept two Bs in a row. Looks a little complicated, but if you get an A, you start, you get an A, you move to state 2. If you, you're in state 2 and you get another A, you move to state 4. You'll stay that way until you get an A, uh, until you get a B, which will then move you to state 3. And if you're in state 3 and you get another B, you can transition out of that you go to an error state. I'll explain that in the next slide. But this is the reason that you can't have two Bs in this machine. Now, this is the nice machine. It determines if the, let the letters N-I-C-E have been entered. If you start in state 1, which doesn't have an arrow pointing to it, let me just remedy that right now. All right, there's our start state. And you get an N as your first input. It transitions to state 2. If anything other than an N is entered, you go to the error state, like that. So you can see that. If you have an N, then an I, then a C, then an E, you go to the 
accepting state. And I'll just put a little line around it. Anything else, and you go to the error state. So you can always imagine a state machine that an error state exists if a, an illegal input is entered. Now here's a classic state machine, the power button. If we start with the power off and we click the button, it goes to the on state. If we click the button, it goes to the off state. And it goes round and round and round. So your two states are power off and power on. And there's an action button click. But the transition that occurs depends on the state. So even though in both cases the event is the same, clicking the button, if you are in the power off state, you go to the power on state. And if you're on the power on state, that same button click takes you to the power off state. should be immediately obvious. This is a combination lock. Uh, it's been simplified because it didn't indicate whether you're turning to the right or to the left. But here, the combination turns out to be a 1, then a 3, then a 5. If you're in the initial state, the locked state, and you do not enter a 1, you stay in the locked state. If you get a 1, you move to the one-digit state. If the next digit that you enter is not a 3, you go back to the locked state, etc. So this is a state machine modeling a combination lock. Now this is a badly done turnstile. If you start in the lock position over here and you push, you expect nothing to happen because it's locked. If you put a coin in, and not a swipe card as you do nowadays, you go to the unlock position. If you put a coin in again, well, that's why it's badly designed. You shouldn't be able to accept coins. But if you put a coin in, nothing ha happens. It stays unlocked. But as soon as you push this turnstile, you're allowed in to wherever it was. But now the turnstile is locked. So this is a model of a turnstile as a state machine. Now, many students have seen HTML code. Most HTML tags are paired. Now, a tag is some text which appears between angle brackets. So this is the HTML tag, and this is the closing HTML tag. You have an opening head tag. And a closing head tag, an open body tag, and a closed body tag. What does this mean? Well, this allows context sensitive editors to detect if an editor, if an error has been made. Now, here is a state machine for an HTML checker. There are there are software such as Dreamweaver, where if you have an unclosed tag, the, uh, e the editor, HTML, the Dreamweaver, will identify the part which does not have a paired um, tag. So for example, let's say, well, if you're looking at this machine and you feed it HTML code, before the HTML tag, you stay in the start state over here. As soon as it sees the HTML tag, it, it transitions to state 2 and will stay there until it sees the closing head tag, in which case it moves until it sees the opening head tag. Then it moves to state 3. It will stay there um, reading whatever it reads until it sees the closing head tag. Then it moves over to the body tag, etc., etc., etc. The opening body tag, closing body tag, and closing HTML tag. But what happens if you have some HTML code with an error in it and there's no head tag? Well, 
what will happen then is, let's say you, here we go, you reach the HTML tag, it's like, oh, there's an HTML um, file, it sees the head tag, it moves to state three, and it stays in state three because it never transitions out because there was no head tag. When the entire file has been read, and the let's say Dreamweaver realizes that there has been no closing head tag, you'll see that because instead of, instead of ending up in this state, it ends up in this state, which means that it never saw the the closing head tag. So that Dreamweaver can then highlight the head tag, indicating that it has not been closed. This is one use of state machines in coding. This has been a hurried overview of state machines. The next video will talk about the Turing machines.